Good morning to you, everybody. Let's clap our hands and worship him today. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your to you. Everybody, good morning. Second service, online service, good morning to you as well. If you're visiting with us, hey, same spill, different week. We want to know if you're new, just go ahead and fill out a card, or if you're online, fill out a card online and just send it to us. We just want to pray for you, minister to you as much as we can. Thank you for joining us. Click the share button. Comment below if you got a prayer request. Reach out to us. Man, we just want to minister and worship God and love God. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It says rejoice in the Lord. Every day is a Super Bowl and we won, right? Amen. Come on. Come on. Get excited for the Lord. I said, get excited for the Lord. Come on. Amen. We clap, we shout here. We're that church. <laughs> Sometimes we dance for Jesus. Amen. Hey, let's sing to the, some more. 
Hey, turn to somebody and be sure they're awake this morning, if you would. Speak to somebody, if you would. Go ahead. is walking around these walls. Here we go. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you would never fail me yet Waiting for it. Waiting change to Sing and move, you move the 
please, church. Come on, he's good. Well, good morning. I'm glad you are with us. 11 o'clock service. Happy you are here. Hey, uh, by way of announcements, if you're a visitor with us, if you look inside the pew in front of you, there's a connection card. If you don't mind filling out that connection card, you can, yeah, you can uh, drop that off inside the offering box. Or you can leave it inside your pew or give it to a greeter. Any of those will work just fine, okay? So we'd appreciate that. Um, also, as far as our, our offerings, okay, we're going to do, if this is your first time back, we're going to do it a little differently. We don't, uh, we're not taking up tithes and offerings as we have in the past by passing out bags. And instead, we have offering boxes inside the front and side foyers, okay? You can also go to bestcc.net so you can make tithes and offering there. Or you can fill out a visitor's card there as well if you'd rather do that then write it by hand, all right? Uh, other announcements, students, 7th through 12th grade, we'll be bowling right here at Country Lanes, the one right here in Shady Grove, okay, from 6 to 8 o'clock, okay? 6 to 8 o'clock, right? 6 to 8 o'clock. Church normally starts at 6.30. I'm trying to emphasize to them, 6 to 8 o'clock, okay? So we can do it uh, $9 to bowl, and that's all you can bowl during that time frame, okay? So you can, you can meet us there or we will leave from here at 555. We'll bring the van if anybody needs to be dropped off here and bust over, all right? So that's our student ministry, 7th through 12th grade. Life groups, last day to sign up for life groups is next week, okay? So next Sunday is our last day. You say, what are life groups? Well, it's a time for people to gather in small groups, 5 to 10, and uh, you can gather in homes, you can gather at, say, Applebee's or wherever y'all decide to gather. But uh, I prefer a home that's a little quieter normally, unless you're at mine with my twins. But you can, you can gather at a home and you come together, you study the word, sharpen one another. You, uh, you, you really go through life in a lot of ways, okay? Um, for many of us in this church, uh, testimony-wise, like for many of them, that, that was a great outbreak for them, is getting involved in a small group, getting to know some other people who love the Lord and want to see his kingdom grow. And so I would encourage you, if you're looking for a place to get involved, that's a great place to get involved in. So you can sign up this week and next week. You can sign up online or you can sign up in the front or side foyer on paper. All right. Uh, we have a worship night coming up for uh, anyone in the Kids Bridge or Youth Ministry. If you are interested in that, that's the 31st at 6 o'clock. If you're interested in that, you need to go online and sign up. There are limited spots for that. And so uh, be sure that you sign up for that if uh, your kid wants to help in that way or wants to worship that way. Uh, men's study begins, we're going to have a three-week men's study, okay? That will begin tomorrow night at 6 o'clock inside the Lighthouse Building, which is the one right here, the one with all the cars parked out front when you show up tomorrow. All right, so that'll be at 6 o'clock. It'll just be a potluck, bring your own dish if you want to. If you don't, you're still welcome. We won't kick you out, I promise. All right, but it'll be a good night. Uh, we're just going to do three weeks, good study, just, just for us men. And uh, lastly, hey, if you're looking for a place to serve, Torbert wanted me to mention that they have some spots coming up where they need some adults to come and serve in the children's department, all right? So if you are looking for a place to serve, that's a great place and very rewarding place uh, to go and serve, all right? Hey, let's continue in worship. Men, hope to see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Let's pray, and we'll continue to worship the Lord. God, thank you so much, Lord, for this day. I thank you that we're able to come here and sing and glorify you, Lord. God, I beg you, Lord, just slow us down for a minute. Just help us to be still, Lord, and, and remember who you are. Remember who we're singing to. And God, may we leave here forever changed. And God, I pray that as we leave, we, we lead our families well, and we lead them closer to you. And God, that as we go to maybe restaurants or friends' homes or wherever we go to, to gather, to eat, Lord, I pray that you are glorified, Lord, and we make your name known. Lord, fill Jamie as he preaches. Let him preach your word boldly. And it's in your name. Amen. You stand together, everybody. Man, the Lord is good. Do you believe that, church? God is good all the time. He's faithful. He's faithful in everything. Just lift our hearts. I love you, Lord. And though your mercy never fails me, and all my days 
I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head as I will sing of the goodness of God. Why oh, you sing loud today all my life? So my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Cause I will sing of the goodness of God Cause I love your voice You have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other no one known you as a father known you as a friend for I have lived in the goodness of God all my life so my good amen it's also good whenever we just uh, the music is quiet and you just hear many voices singing as one to the Lord amen God inhabits the praises of his people he's called us to pour out his praise this morning every every day actually to pour out his praise from here everybody point to your heart come on Everybody point to your heart. It's from here. It's not from here. It's from here. And whenever this is transformed to this, and then it's this. Here, Dad. Hey, Dad. Here, I need you. It's not about who's on my left, who's on my right, who's singing, who's preaching. It's about, hey, God, it's you. Here I am. Here's my heart. Let me pour out my worship, pour out my praise. 
We just need to be available. God, move in this place. Let us be available now. Somebody needs to come and pray at this altar, Lord, to get their heart prepared. Pray you just take control of this room, Lord. Lord, anoint this time. faithfulness and how we need to see mountains moved and I don't really know what that looks like going forward from here but I know if you live in America then you need to see a mountain move this week maybe you have some personal mountains you also need to see moved and so I pray that we can just lay those at the feet of Jesus and we can just say they're yours and faith as small as a mustard seed and they'll be moved right out of your way because of God, not because of us, but because of our God that we serve. So I pray that you are available to whatever he's going to do in your heart this morning.
Would you pray with me, God? Jesus, we love you. Lord, some of us might need to be shaken in our faith because we're so discontent where we are. God, I pray you just, if that is us, Lord, I pray that we would just, uh, Lord, we'd, we would just let you shake us and we would just follow. We'd follow you. We wouldn't let you follow us because we don't know where we're going. We need you to lead us, Jesus. God, I pray for salvation in this room, restoration in this room, conviction, Lord. Because if our heart is hard and you're knocking at the door, we're not going to answer pray you just open up our hearts this morning. Use pastor as he teaches this morning. Be with everybody that's listening online, in this room, wherever, Lord, speak. It's more than, it's more than a church service. It's you manifesting your glory, God. God, come in and move. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good to have all of you here in our uh, second service. Man, we had a full house and about this many in uh, the first service. And so uh, it's been a good day so far. Uh, I've been uh, doing some reading. Uh, and probably uh, you do the same thing every year. You, you begin to read the Bible and you start from the beginning and you go through and and so uh, I've done that this year, and so I'm back uh, at the beginning, uh, going through some things, seeing the Israelites in the wilderness, and, and going through all the ups and downs. And, and so uh, some things have kind of uh, popped out to me a, a little differently than normal. And so I've, I've, I guess because of the times we're in, I have paid attention a little more to the wilderness experiences of the Israelites and I'm noticing something. I'm noticing a lot of good things about God was revealed during those wilderness journeys and those wilderness experiences. So I want to spend the next few weeks uh, in a series that I've entitled Wilderness uh, and just talking about growing during tough times. You Because know, usually uh, we do a lot better when it comes to our relationship with God in the good times, right? We know what to do. We're, uh, uh, God, thank you for blessing me. Uh, man, everything's good. God's a good God, all this stuff, you know. But during the bad times, uh, sometimes we seem lost. Sometimes we're just not sure. Sometimes it's just our own sinful nature. We just don't respond correctly. And so I want to begin this series uh, this morning in talking about the wilderness journeys. But let me uh, take your attention today to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'll begin with verse 10. <clears throat> it says this, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. 
They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? Why have you done, what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you'll see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Let's pray. Lord, we love you, and thank you for this time. Lord, it's a time that we've set aside to sing your praises and to dig into your word. And I pray that you use me today. I know there's nothing I can do to meet any need, but I know you can. So, Lord, I pray that you use this message for your good. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. You ever been through something that was just so exhausting? I mean, it was a big, scary deal. And, man, you you put so much effort in it. Maybe it was a goal or maybe it was just an obstacle in your life. And, man, it took everything you could to get through it. And, and, and you, you finally got through it and you were left with just, man, you were exhausted but excited at the same time because, man, you had been through so much. And then just the moment you begin to relax and say, Man, it's finally over. Something else comes upon you. And you're like, man, I can't, I can't do, take no more. It took all that I had to get through that experience. I don't have nothing left for this one. I thought it was over. I thought I was going to have a, a, a time to relax and, and rest up. And, but, but now, man, this mountain seems to be even bigger than the one I just got through. I don't know what to do. I'm at my wit's end. Well, that's where we find the Israelites here in our passage. If you remember, they had just been delivered from Egypt in a series of plagues. God had sent ten plagues uh, and used Moses to uh, remove God's people. And man, they they finally uh, are are on their way uh, leaving Egypt. and, and, And they're journeying. And man, they're exhausted. They're wiped out. And in just the moment they begin to relax, they realize that Pharaoh had had a change of heart. And he had released all his soldiers to go and get the Israelites to bring them back to slavery. I mean, man, they were, they were truly in a rock and a hard place. Uh, between a rock and a hard place. There was, there was nowhere for them to go. Due to the direction of their journey, which the Lord had led them. The Lord's doing this leading, by the way. They find themselves between, man, a a sea, a desert, and the enemy behind them. Martin Luther, he wrote these words about their situation. He said, they were like a mouse in a trap or a bird in a snare. Their choices were the desert, the sea, or the enemy. Man, you remember that old course, God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He'll make a way for me. He'll be my guide. He'll hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. You know there's going to be some times in our lives. Where there seems to be no way out. There's going to be some times where you just don't seem like you can go forward where there doesn't seem to be a light at the end of the tunnel and man it's during these times that God can show up in bigger ways than we could ever imagine with God there's always a way and and in our passage I want to point out some things that talk about uh, just what, what we learn from God during this wilderness experience. Number one is this. I, I want you to see the correct response in the wilderness. The correct response in the wilderness. When times of trouble come in our lives, it's important that we respond the correct way. Listen, Christians. Listen to me. If you're a follower of the Lord today, when, when you're in a downtime. 
when you're in a sacrificial suffering time, when you're in a time of crisis, it's very important that you respond the right way. And here we see in our passage the response. There's two separate responses. The first one is a response of fear. It's a response that we see from the Israelites. Man, hey, they just got delivered with ten plagues. There were frogs, flies, gnats. I mean, all these crazy things. Blood. I mean, crazy stuff happening. They, they witness all that. And God's protection with them through it all. And, and, and they have just gotten past all that. And they come up against their first obstacle after it. And they start complaining. Isn't it amazing? This is the first of a long list of negativity and complaining that would become a very bad habit in the life of the Israelites. And man, they are complaining. They are down and out. They're even telling Moses, man, I wish you'd have left us back there. We'd rather be slaves than than in this predicament that we're in. Man, fear had gripped them. Suddenly all the knowledge of God's presence, all all the recollection of what they had just been through was gone. Everything that God had done for them, they had forgotten just like that. And fear had taken hold of them. You see, church, that's really, it seems to be what's happening in our country. The reason for all the division, the reason for all the name-calling, the reason for all the lies and all the negativity is because fear has swept our land. Isn't it amazing how God can do so much and be so faithful and and, and just as soon as we come up on on one thing that we are concerned about or some kind of crisis, it seems like we forget everything that God has done. His faithfulness over and over and over. So there's the response of fear, but then we see the response of faith in Moses. At least one person had learned from the ten plagues experience. At least one person had benefited from this, these valuable lessons that they had learned and, and that God could be trusted. And so Moses is like, hey, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen or how God's going to do it. But I just saw some things happen back there. I know that he, he didn't bring us here this far To let us down. You see that's the difference in fear and faith. Fear breeds complaining. But faith breeds contentment. Fear focuses on poor consequences. But faith focuses on powerful conclusions. Fear doubts someone. But faith depends on someone. Fear uh, tires out. But faith toils on. Fear has a negative outlook. But faith sees a new outcome. Fear paralyzes us. But faith pushes us. Fear puts our circumstances between us and God. But faith puts God between us and our circumstances. Fear tells God about our problems. But it's faith that tells the problems about our God. Man, many times when... Crisis seems to hit a church or hit a society or a nation. Man, one of the things that I always watch is not the response of everybody, but the response of Christians. Because if anybody should seem to to have a better outlook when it comes to negativity, it should be us as Christians. But it's amazing how quick we forget God's blessings and God's goodness. There's the correct response in the wilderness. But secondly, I want you to see the command that's revealed in the wilderness. The command revealed in the wilderness. You see, there's a time to ask and then there's a time to act. Amen? Hey, nothing wrong with having patience. The Bible talks a lot about it. But sometimes I I think we, we use that as an excuse to not do anything. 
James 4, 17, it says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin to them. You see, I'm convinced there are many times we'd just rather sit back and pray than to do anything. Man, as I, as I look around, and yes, we're in crisis. Yes, there's a lot of mystery. Yes, there are a lot of unanswered questions. But it amazes me how Christians get so focused in all of the unknown instead of doing what they already know they need to do. You see, there's a lot of things, ladies and gentlemen, we know that we need to do, and we just don't do them. And we, we allow ourselves to get preoccupied in all the unknown, and, and we don't take care of the things that is known. Instead of moving forward sometimes, we, we just decide to, to sit back and, and do nothing. Um, kind of like this ship that was sinking in the middle, middle of the storm. And the captain called out and said, is there anybody here that knows how to pray? One guy said, yeah, I know how to pray. He said, will you pray while we put on our life jackets? We're one short. <laughs> Some of you are slow, but you're worth waiting on. Amen. Sometimes God wants us to move more instead of meditate more. Decisions have to be made. And, and life teaches us that decisions are not made. If decisions are not made in a timely manner, somebody or something will make those decisions for us. President Ronald Reagan, he said he learned this lesson early in his life when he was a child. He had an aunt send a, uh, a shoe tailor to him asking what uh, he wanted with his shoes, if he wanted a, a round toe or a square toe. And he said, well, I'm not sure. A few days later, the tailor came and asked and said, well, have you made up your mind? He said, no, I'm still thinking about it. I'm not sure. A few days later, the tailor showed up with his shoes. One was round, one was square. And he said he always put those shoes in every office that, that he had to always remind him that if he didn't make his decisions, somebody would make it for him. This was a desperate situation. The Egyptians were close. They, they, there wasn't much time to waste. The Lord basically told Moses that he should stop praying and move. Get to moving. And, and sometimes that's what we do. We allow fear to paralyze us. And, and instead of doing what we already know to do, we, we, just, get, we just get paralyzed in all the unknown. Of course, we can't disregard the importance of prayer. For it's got to have a vital place in our life. But man, sometimes we can't ignore the need for action as well. There are a lot of opportunities that have been missed in the life of a Christian. All in the name of prayer. Got to pray about it. Got to pray about it. Got to pray about it. Church, listen to me. If the Bible tells you to do something, you don't have to pray about that. There's no need to pray about things that you know you're supposed to do as a Christian. There's something to be said about do, doing things today instead of putting them off tomorrow. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, it says today is the day of salvation. Joshua 24, 15, it says choose this day whom you will serve. Psalm 118, 24 says, Today is the day that the Lord has made. Now it's important to note that the Lord deals directly with Moses here. Who was Israel's leader? God asked Moses, why are you crying out? God directed this question to Moses because someone needed to stay on track and Moses was the leader. If the people were losing it, the, the leader couldn't lose it. He had to keep it all together. As followers of Jesus, we also are called to be leaders. And, and man, when your friends begin to, 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 to lose focus, we've got we've to remain focused. When our family begins to lose focus, somebody's got to step up and stay focused. When our churches and, and communities seem to be losing focus, we as Christians and followers of Christ have to continue to stay focused in doing what God's called us to do. 
This would soon become a great victory for God and also for Moses. Perhaps Israel would have never crossed the sea unless Moses had had the persistence of faith. The people identified themselves with Moses and God used Moses' leadership as an instrument to take them across the sea. Perhaps John Maxwell was right when he said everything rises and falls on leadership. Number three, I want you to see the complete redeemer in the wilderness. The complete redeemer in the wilderness. Now God had already proved over and over to be the Israelites redeemer. However, up until this point, God's redemption had been incomplete. Because of course the Egyptians were still on their heels. And so God orchestrates a situation to be able to perform one of the greatest miracles that we have in all of Scripture. I mean, there was no other option. God had to show up in an extraordinary way. Man, hey, you ever found yourself in in a place where, man, God was going to have to do something if your predicament was going to improve? Hey, there was no way for your situation to get better unless God miraculously did something. Hey, church, that's not a bad place to be. That's not a bad place to be. Sometimes that's where we need to be so that we'll trust him more. Sometimes that's where God wants us. Hey, we see examples of that over and over in the Bible. Remember Abraham? Abraham prayed and prayed for a child. And, 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 or, and God told, him, told Abraham that you're going to be the father of, 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 of a, a huge nation. And man, your descendants are going to be like the stars. And so you, you remember what Abraham did? They were getting old, no, no kids. And so Abraham and, and Sarah, they, they, they have an idea. Hey, what, won't you uh, lay with your maidservant? Then they'll have, you'll have a child because I seem to be barren, Sarah says. And so Abraham says, well, sounds like a good deal to me. So they, they get together and they have a, they have a child. And then, and then obviously that, what, that didn't work out. Sarah, Sarah winds up having a child. And then as soon as Sarah has a child, you remember what happened? Not long after that, he calls Abraham to sacrifice his child. This child that's supposed to be the father of nations, right? But then through that, God orchestrates something and reveals himself in a miraculous way, something that Abraham never forgets. And then then we see the example of Joseph. You remember Joseph has a dream. And, and God tells him he's going he's gonna to be uh, higher than all his brothers. And God's going to use him in a great way. And so his, his brothers, uh, man, they take that kind of offensively. And they wind up selling him into slavery. And man, Joseph's life just seems to spiral downward. And you're like, man, you, you're, if you're reading the story of Joseph, you're like, man, that don't match what he was dreaming about. I, I mean, something's going wrong here. But if you keep reading, God begins to turn some things around and open some doors through all that. And he becomes second in command in all of Egypt. And then you have, of course, the disciples. They get called. They leave their family. They leave everything to follow Jesus. Three years. I mean, they they give their life for this guy. He winds up getting crucified by the people He loves and that he came for. But through that, the resurrection occurs. They they begin, they they see something that God's revealed in a in a miraculous way that carries them on in their journey as the church begins to explode. So God not only delivers. A miraculous way of escape. But he also makes their redemption complete by removing any chance of the enemy to ever strike again. In other words, God offers the deliverance for the Israelites. But he also orders the destruction of the Egyptians. You see, God not only frees the righteous, but church, he fires the unrighteous. He promises to justify the saved, but he also promises to judge the unsaved. The word redeem comes from several Greek words. It means to set free completely. You see, man, 
why did he go so far? Why did he go so far to, to, to redeem this, this group that, that, that's already complaining? Well, he does it first of all because he, he fulfills a promise that he gave them. Joshua 21, 25 assures us that, that not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Church, there's a lot of people that uh, can't be trusted these days. But I, I assure you, what God says in his word, you can trust. There are times when God uses what seems to be impossible situations, not just to test our faith, but man, to reveal his power and his complete control over all situations. Number four, I want you to see the coming relief, the coming relief in the wilderness. The relief that the Israelites thought that they would enjoy after the ten plagues would finally come, but only came in God's timing when His plan was fulfilled. It's important to remember that God's timing, ladies and gentlemen, is perfect. Amen? I love what Jerry Vine said. He said, a defeat that leaves you humble is better than a victory that leaves you proud. Hey, we need to hear that. Listen, a defeat that leaves you humble is better than a victory that leaves you puffed up and proud. In this fallen world that we live in, man, times of trouble are a part of our lives. (laughs) I mean, they're just going to come. But God's love and care in times of triumph can also be a part of our lives for those that know Him. The people of Israel finally were moved to put their faith in the Lord. And rather than fearing their adversaries, they now feared the Almighty. And man, that made all the difference. You know, one of the things that I, I've learned going through difficult times is, is, man, just being reminded that God is God, man, makes a, makes a big difference. And I think that, man... During these wilderness times, one of the things that that God was over and over trying to teach them is, hey, I'm still your God. Yes, I've delivered you. I've done all those things. But now you're in the valley. Now you're in the wilderness. I'm still God. Let me show you something in 2 Samuel 3.39. David was in a, a really rough time. The two generals of the two kingdoms were kind of at at odds. And and he uh, he had done a deal with the northern kingdom. And man was was excited about joining, being the king of everything, which he had thought that God anointed him to do. And and he knew that God had called him to do so. But some things went down. One general kills the other. And man, everything that he he thinks would happen winds up not happening. And this is what he says. He says, on this day, I am weak, but still, I'm an anointed king. In other words, hey, today is, I'm weak, but I'm still an anointed king. Man, we need to remind ourselves of that. Man, hey, hey, times are bad. This is happening in my life, but God's still on the throne. He's still my savior. He still called me, Right? Every once in a while, oh, Landon, our, our oldest boy, will uh, he'll be uh, he'll start pitching a fit, and uh, I, I mean just going all out. And, and we even have this saying: we'll say, "Landon's about to blow." <laughs> I mean, he's, he, you can tell he's just he, he's he's going all out. He, he's just at his wits' end. I mean, he is breaking down. And then every once in a while, he just finally, man, after he's done with all, he'll just get up and he'll come. Dad, I I want to hold you. And what he's saying is, I want you to hold me. After all, he don't know what else to do. He's he's ticked off. He he, he can't get what he's trying to do. He's trying to play with something. It's just not working. He's totally mad. And after after he realizes there's nothing else to do, he says, Dad, I just want to hold you. (laughs) Hey, in your darkest times. When things seem to can't get any better, just remember you still have a father who loves you. 
Hey, don't ever forget God's still on the throne. This ain't his first rodeo. He's a big boy. He can handle your problem. He can, just like he has anybody in the past, God's still on the throne. Don't ever forget who saved your soul and who died for your sins. Remember that old course we mentioned at the beginning? God will make a way. Well, you know, you don't ever hear much about the second part of that song. It goes like this. By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. And rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade, but his word will still remain. He will do something new today. Listen, just because you've been through the wilderness doesn't mean that you may not have to go through the river as well for God's plan to be accomplished in your life. You see, God will make a way. We may not know how. We may not know when. We may not know where. But we can know that He will. Because He's God. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for... Our time together. Lord, I can't imagine the needs that are represented here. and Even those listening online. Lord, I, I have no idea what burdens may be carried. What particular situations may be. But Lord I, I, I know. That you can bring deliverance in it all. Lord perhaps there are some that just need to be reminded of your faithfulness and your goodness. And, and, or just that you're, you're still God. And you're sovereign over all things. Lord help us to never forget that. With every head bowed and eyes closed. No one looking around. You say, Pastor, I'm here. and One thing I know is that I'm not saved. I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. And if something were to happen to me or if Jesus were to come back, I, I, it wouldn't be good for me because I don't know Jesus. And but I, I want to today. I don't want another service to end. With me not knowing him. And so today I want to give my life to the Lord. If that's you. I, with no one looking. I wonder if you'd slip your hand up. Gently just so that I can see it. Say pastor that's me. I want to give my life to the Lord. Just raise your hand so that I can see it. Just raise your hand so that I can see it. Gently. Yes, I see that hand. Yes. Yes. Maybe you're online and you say, uh, Pastor, that's me. I, I'm not saved. I, I want to be saved. I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. Hey, if you've raised your hand or, or if you're online watching this presentation, I want to lead you in a prayer that just involves some things that is necessary for salvation to occur. And Man, it's all about your sincerity of your heart whether it is the words that you say but man if you're serious today it's the greatest day of your life and, and if for those that raise your hand for those listening online you say today's the day for me today is the day of salvation you pray this to yourself Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner and I believe that you died for my sins I also believe that you rose from the grave to conquer death, hell, and sin. Today, I commit my life to you and I accept your forgiveness for all of my wrongdoings. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name.
I pray. No one looking. If you prayed that online, I encourage you to type out four words. I prayed that prayer. You just type out those four words in the comment section. I prayed that prayer. If you're in the house, you prayed that, and you say, Pastor, I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Could I see your hand again? You just slip it up. You say, I prayed that prayer. Yes, I see that hand. Yes, praise the Lord. If you raised your hand, will you do something? Will you look at me? Will you look at me? Yes. Okay. Will you, will you, will you stand up and come to me? Maybe you're here, you say, Pastor, if I'm honest, man, I'm in a wilderness time in my life. Going through some things, I just, just pray that I'll respond correctly. Pray that I'll trust God during this time. Whatever the case may be, you just say, I'm in a wilderness journey right now in my life. Would you pray for me? I wonder if I could see your hand. Yes, yes, I see those. Yes, I see them. Hey, we're going to stand. We're going to sing. We'll just give you an opportunity to pray however you want to respond during this time. Had a young lady just give her life to the Lord. Amen. Yes. As we sing, for whatever reason, you want to come and pray concerning the Lord and what's going on in your life, uh, you come this time. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day.
you know, one day... Uh, And the things that we have seen, man, uh, it's just the testimony.